All right, let's call this meeting to order. We'll do a roll call to determine the quorum for RDC. So you, Steve. Uh, Steve Denny here. Craig Campbell here. Lynn Mellinger. I think Dave Cra Cravens is coming, but we'll have to wait to see on that. So we do have a quorum. RDA. Mike Romack. Mike Romack is here. <laughs> With no quorum, single power there. All right, so we have quorum, but let's move to election of officers for the RDC. I would like to nominate Dan Maddox uh, as president. Um, I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Maybe Dan. <laughs> we'll find out. Uh, and, as, and as Jeff said earlier, if Dan can't do it or doesn't want to do it, we will redo this at the next RDC meeting. So there's president, we got vice president. Do we have any nominations for vice president? Uh, you wanna do it? Well, do it? You, wanna, yeah, you yeah, wanna yeah. do it? No, I was pointing. Yes, that's be, I nominate uh, Craig Campbell for vice president. A second. A nomination and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, Craig Campbell, vice president. Secretary, you're the treasurer, right? I'm the secretary. You're the secretary. Do we have any Do we nominations? Have I nominate Lynn. I second. You have Lynn? Aye. <laughs> <laughs> All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none. Lynn is treasurer. Secretary. Or secretary and who's our treasurer? We don't have a treasurer, do we? We don't need one. Just the secretary. Mm -hmm. yeah. And Mike's still okay. We're done. Okay. RDA, since we don't have a quorum, are you in charge of the thing, Mike? I guess I'm in charge, but that's no, you still are. <laughs> I still am. <laughs> Nobody here. Michelle couldn't even be on the line, huh? She didn't hear me. Okay, good. Why don't we test to make sure he can hear us? Just to let make sure he can hear us and then. Even though we have one more thing. Brian, can you hear us? Yep, I can hear you guys. Good deal. Well, let's. Okay. You want to go to that? Yeah, let's go right to them when you're ready. If we've got everything. Ready. Out we can away. prove meet, meeting minutes later. Okay. Oh, okay. New business. Annual financial report for the TIP district. Brian, you're on. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> Oops. All right. Good evening, everybody. Hello. I will attempt to share my screen. This sometimes works and sometimes gives, does not like me. So let's see. Is it okay if I share at this point in time? Yes. Okay. All right. Do you guys see that? Yep. Yep. All right. So we'll go through this. Um, this is similar to what we did last year. Um, we'll say just, it looks like all the TIF areas should be getting a little bit more money this year. Last year, they went down a little bit from the prior year because of a tax rate reduction, but this year it looks like um, they all are a little bit higher and then one to about $30,000 higher. So Good. that's positive. They're going the right direction. So a lot of this, well, this, this, this slide's going to change. Um, that's just the members of the Redevelopment Commission. So we'll update that. Uh, just This is just a slide of who the team is that works on this. Uh, Sam and I have worked on it in the past, and we've added Tim um, from our office to help with uh, working with Pendleton as well as we go forward. There we go. And then first we'll go through just some kind of basics of TIFF. And if you have questions, we can go back into this in more detail, but we'll kind of go through some of the basics, then we'll go through each of the three TIF areas by themselves specifically, um, and then wrap it up at, at the end and how it impacts other taxing units. Um, so just real basic on TIF. Uh, once we set a, a TIF area, put a TIF area in place, 
we create what's called the base assessed values that locks in that assessed valuation that's there at the time of establishment of the TIF area. And then any type of growth in the assessed valuation that occurs is what we call the incremental assessed value. So the gray portion is the base. And that goes to all the um, overlapping taxing units. So the town gets the whatever assessed value is there, the town uses it for their regular budget. Uh, schools use it, township, county, and so on. The incremental portion can all be captured by the Redevelopment Commission, or you could choose to capture a portion of it. Um, at this point in time, we're capturing everything. Uh, but if TIF area has got to be so substantial that you didn't need the TIF, you could decide to pass that through um, to the other units, and then they could use some of that assessed valuation for their budgets as well. Uh, all TIF areas do have an end life once an obligation is put in place. And so if you don't have uh, a debt obligation in place, then the clock on that TIF area has not yet started. And we'll talk about that with, with one of your areas as we go forward. Uh, but once that obligation is put in place under the current rules, it is a 25 year max term for that TIF area. So two of your areas, we know when they're gonna end. And one of your areas, uh, we don't have an end date for it yet. Once that TIF area does come to an end, uh, then all of that assessed valuation goes into the budget calculations for all of the different overlapping tax units. And that's what the blue portion of the graph represents here. Uh, a couple of pieces of terminology I like to kind of cover because uh, sometimes this gets confusing when people start talking about TIF areas. Um, first big picture we have what's the redevelopment district uh, and that is coterminous with the town of Pendleton and what that redevelopment district is important for is if you ever have to levy a special benefits tax that's property tax that gets levied on the entire town the entire redevelopment district the red portion is the economic development area and that's the area in which you can spend TIF dollars and then the on my screen, it's orange. I'm not sure what it is on yours. Uh, but then there's the tax allocation area, and that's where you actually can capture the incremental assessed valuation. When TIF areas first started, the allocation area and the EDA were typically the same size. Over time, we've kind of gotten um, more creative or smarter, if you will, and, and have smaller allocation areas where you capture that TIF from but it can be used in a larger area, a larger economic development area. And some economic development areas have multiple allocation areas in them as well. So that's just some basic terminology um, when you hear or when you talk about kind of TIF and, and TIF areas to keep in mind. I briefly touched on the expiration of the TIF areas. This has changed over time. Um, I won't spend a lot of time on this. Basically, what you need to know is that for any new TIF areas that are created, that there is a 25 year life in that TIF area once you enter into an obligation or debt to be paid from that TIF area. Otherwise, that clock doesn't start, like I mentioned. So now we'll get into the specific Pendleton TIF areas. So the first one is the Pendleton Economic Development Area, number one. So this is created in 1999. Uh, it does have an expiration in 2031. So this does not have much time really left on it. Uh, about seven more years of collections coming out of this TIF area. And this year we're estimating that the TIF collection should be just shy of $700,000. Last year it was estimated to be just under 690,000. So we're talking maybe $6,000 more, $8,000 more in collections this year is what we're anticipating. Uh, it does have two bonds that are outstanding uh, that are being paid from TIF from this area. One is the uh, TIF bond that has a property tax backup on it. And the other one is the waterworks bond issue. Uh, what was that, that first has, one again? I'm sorry. Yeah, the first one's in 2015. It was a road, I want to say it was a road bond issue. Okay. Uh, so about a million two is left outstanding on that. Um, and both of these were issued 
little bit more of a history lesson. Both of these were issued when the state had just put into place a new rule um, having old TIF areas that didn't have an end date mandating that they will now have an end date put in place. Um, and so we issued both of these bonds in 2015 that went out for 15 years, basically, um, out to 2031 to extend the life of those areas. Otherwise, those areas would have ended in 2025. Um, so by doing these two bond issues, we're able to use TIF dollars for the road and then also for the water uh, improvements as well. So the second bond is paid from TIF and then also from uh, water revenues if needed, and then a property tax backup as well. So Brian, this is Scott. Yeah. So I did have a question the other day uh, by the chair of the Utility Rate Advisory Board, because we're doing a water and electric um, rate study right now. And she was wondering why, you wouldn't know this, but it led to the question I have for you. She goes, why didn't the town, um, use the rate, the water rate to pay for the new water treatment plant. And then, so you sort of answered that by saying they felt like they need to start using it because of the current state law at the time. But what, what changes if we started to use more waterworks revenue to pay off that bond? Would that, other than freeing up more bond for the RD, more money for the RDC, more TIF money for the RDC, is there anything else consequences that we should know about if we start doing that? Or can we even do it? Um, I think uh, I'd have to look to see if the covenants said a certain amount of TIF had to go to the bond, but I don't believe so. I think it was okay. tax increment and waterworks revenues. And okay. then behind it is property taxes. And it it has just been, my understanding is just a choice to keep using just TIF for that. Yeah. So. Um, Mr. Chair, just to know that we're looking at that during the rate study to have Waterworks pick that up because that your the, your money is more flexible, mm -hmm. and so that may be something we're seriously considering. It depends what the rate study comes back, and we haven't done an increase for 15 years, so it's not going to be a tight one. <laughs> So is the is the thought to have it all paid from Waterworks then for that bond issue? Um, we we just want to look at it. I've talked okay. to the consultant and that's doing the study, and um, we'll just see how it comes out. And then you know you've got the political factor of of what you want your new rates to be. So is that is Andre working on that or? No, we've got uh, Buzz Crone working on it. Okay you know, your enemy, your competition. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> our rivals. Uh, I, rivals. I like working with Buzz. I work, I see Buzz every once in a while. He's not, Scott, he's not bad, not bad for a competitor. <laughs> are we still of the opinion that the uh, RDC money, the TIF money is not going to be used out on 67? No, yeah, we don't need to use it. We got the impact money. It so, was initially until we had the impact right. money. So we, we we do have some money. Yeah, we're starting to build up the account. Yeah. So, but we've That'd got be great some, if we could use, oh, no. use more. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know that some of them we're going to start spending engineering on it. Right. And then the other one. talk about offline. Sorry, Brian, we're, we're, we're just yakking here. Go ahead. <laughs> That's okay. Um, so as we go forward, so then this just shows the comparison of the, the TIF and then the debt payments. Um, so to your question about what would, you know, under this schedule, it's the kind of the top portion. So it's pretty significant amount you know, over $300,000 of, of TIF each year that you would have coming back if you did have all of the waterworks bonds paid out of the water fees. Let's do that. <laughs> so that, that, that would be it. And then, you know, that would bring more money into the TIF. 
I mean, that is the answer. And then you do have some flexibility on that. You don't have a lot of time left. Yeah, um, right. But, you know, that would be something for the next seven or eight years that you could use uh, to, to pay for projects. Scott, is this something you need Brian to check on to see if we're able to do this or does your, your consultant? So the rate, we're going to include it in the rate study. So will the rate study will come back with a rate like this and then you have to, I don't mean politics in a political sense, but you have to look at what's acceptable to the community sure. and the customers. You have to peel back something. Sure. Sometimes, sometimes you won't. Or we do incremental increases, which I think is what we're going to end up doing. Which is but, but more digestible. Do we need to check with somebody, Brian, or somebody? No, no, we feasible that's it. to do that. No, it's. I think we're good. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think you're okay, and I and it, it wouldn't take much to take a look back at the transcript from that to see. Yeah. Right. And I could take a hey, quick look. I back. could take. What was that? Go ahead, Brian. You're. I was saying I could just take a quick look at that and let you know, Scott, if there's any issues with it. Right. It'll be part of the rate right study. Yeah. Yep. So then the next area is the uh, Pendleton Consolidated Redevelopment Area Number One. So this area uh, doesn't have an obligation to it yet. So. It is generating TIF, uh, but it does not yet have an end date on it. So you don't see an expiration date for this TIF area. And we're estimating about $169,000 of TIF this year. That was about 30,000 less last year. Um, so, you know, that, that TIF does seem to be growing in the right direction with some more dollars coming in this year. And then the third area is the Pendleton Falls Point um, Economic Development Area. So this was created in 2018, and this also, it does have the, the end life on it because we do have the bonds outstanding for this area. And we're estimating about $382,000, and that's about 7,000 higher than what was uh, coming in for pay 22. So this is the bond issue related to the, the wellness center project. Uh, this does have the TIF paying for it with a, a property tax backup. In addition to the lease bond payments being paid, there also are payments that are, are going out um, over the life of the uh, bonds or a portion of the life of the bonds we'll show here in a second. Um, as well. So Brian, on that one, we just yeah. got noticed, uh, ironically, this week, um, so the Wellness Center <laughs> Corporation, they're in the agreement with the town, if the tax, probably tax went above a certain rate, then what we uh, turn back to the the wellness center increases. So um, we'll let you know as soon as we think they over they over calculated what that is. So they include penalties because apparently they didn't pay some property tax last year. So they included the penalties, which we don't think is part should be part of the calculation. So yeah, that when it comes back and the dust settles, we'll let you know, or if we feel like we need to bring you in, as negotiations have gotten bad, but yeah, we'll let you know. And the magnitude is only about 12,000 a year, but it's, it's still, I think it's 12,000. Yeah, I don't, I think you're right. I don't see why penalties, because they didn't pay, should be part of that calculation. I think they just looked at the bottom line of their tax bill and didn't go in and look at the other, the OAs, the other assessments. That's probably, that's, you're probably right. Yeah, let us, let us know, or if you need something on that, but. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's interesting. Yeah, that whole thing's interesting. So this just shows the calculation 
uh, which shows the TIF payments, it shows the lease rental payments, um, and then the monthly payments, uh, which still leaves about $160,000 a year in, in TIF available um, in, in that TIF area. And then this just graphically shows that, that same information that does so those monthly payments after 15 years falling off. Uh, but then you do have the bond payments continuing for a few more years after that um, on the current payment schedule. And then we had a slide in if there's any kind of future projects that are known to be funded with TIF. And after talking with Scott, I mean, there's some things, there's always things out there, right? Um, but nothing at specific levels at this point in time. So we just put a kind of a generic future economic and infrastructure projects. That's just why you, you know, if you do have balances, you want to keep accruing those balances uh, for some of those future projects that may come down the road. And then we also have to talk about impacts. And so briefly on that, just a reminder of when we talk taxing district, overlapping taxing units, who is it? Um, it's all the different components that you may have. And then as far as the, the impact on other units, um, you know, there are some immediate benefits to having a TIF area. Uh, there's the personal property assessed valuation that's not being captured, uh, that is, could be generated by new businesses. Um, as I mentioned, TIF AV pass through as a potential down the road, if you want to think about that. Any of those new jobs that come in and people that live within uh, Pendleton or even uh, Madison County for that matter, that increases the local income taxes. And then if there's any referendum rates, um, TIF areas do not capture a referendum rate. So if you have a 10 cent referendum rate put in place, you don't get that 10 cent benefit to the TIF area. Uh, the referendum rate calculation gets the benefit of your captured incremental assessed value. So that's a positive. And then as we mentioned, after the TIF areas end, there is an increase in assessed valuation um, that goes to the tax base for all the taxing units that likely would lead to some property tax decreases at that, that point in time as well as um, circuit breaker savings at that point as well. So that's the last slide that I had. Was there any questions or anything that we needed to go back and address? I don't think so, Brian. Good presentation as always. Thank you. Okay. Well, if anything comes up, let, let us know or questions, and then I'll look into the waterworks um, question. Okay. And get back to you, Scott, on that. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate it. And then just keep me posted on the wellness center so we can get that yep. updated if needed or if we yep. need to help you out of the calculations or whatever. Okay. All right. Thank you, Brian. Thank you. All right. Have a good night. Take care. Not looking too bad. No. All right. We're good with that. Jump back to the minutes. Everybody get a chance to look at the minutes of the last meeting, which was a long time ago. <laughs> and if so, or if not, let me know. We'll give you a minute. Oh, can I grab them? You're good? Yep. I'm good. I'll make a motion. We accept the, uh, the minutes. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none. Minutes from the last meeting are accepted as written. RDA will have to wait till the next week. Yep. All right. Anything else we need to talk about? Um, just the appropriation report. This is just um, what was budgeted for expenditures for this year. 
and we're this is, it takes us to the end of January, February, March, April. And <clears throat> as you can see, we've not because we haven't expended anything for projects or potential purchases. Um, we're just a hair below 90% of obligation is left. You can see some of those are the bond expenditures. Mm -hmm. The revenue, um, so your revenue, the last time we received revenue, we see, receive it twice a year was, so it's in December. So really this, what happens in December 22 was revenue for the first half of 23. And then we received the second half of 23 in June. The first in June, and then we receive it. So June and December, but the December is what gets us through the next year, the first half of the next year. Is that confusing? <clears throat> the anal retentive part of me wants to, for it to start January. <laughs> we get the revenue on January one, just you know, just be easier. To... <laughs> That's why we're glad you're here. <laughs> All right. Anything else we discuss? No. Not really. All right, Danny, you need to talk about, talk about? We need to have a meeting so we can have officers, <laughs> so we can approve minutes and so on. We'll feel bad. We just didn't just, just got to it ourselves. I will alert Dan that he's the new president and see what he says. I'm sure it's fine, but uh, if not, like Jeff said, we'll do it the next time. We'll redo it the next time. Uh, Jeff, you, you got anything for us? No, sir, I don't. Okay. Do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Got a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Many opposed? Sure. Thank you all. Oh.